If you've ever wondered which MSC drink package is worth it or if the upgrade really makes a difference, you're in the right place. We just got back from our MSC Eurybia cruise and today I'm discussing the different bars and lounges as well as breaking down their drink packages. From easy to premium extra and sharing what we loved, what surprised us, and a few things that we didn't expect. Let's dive in. Ahoy travelers, it's Amy here to help you make your travel experience a success. We recently got back from a cruise on the MSC Eurybia where we booked a balcony with the Fantastica experience, which allowed us to choose our location and included Wi-Fi and drinks. MSC has three alcoholic drink packages, Easy, Easy Plus, and Premium. Let's break those down for you. Now, all packages include non-alcoholic cocktails and mixed drinks, soft drinks, fruit juices, bottled water, and hot drinks like espressos and cappuccinos. Beverage gratuities are also included in all packages. As with other cruise lines, if one person in a cabin purchased the drink package, everyone in the cabin over the age of 21 must also purchase the same drink package. The easy package includes selected cocktails that are priced at 7 euros, or I believe it's 7.50 if you're in dollars. This is $46 to $49 a day per person depending on cruise length. So house wines are included as well as some specific beers. Usually it's Heineken. If they don't have Heineken, they may switch it out for another beer. I've heard Miller Lite is one of them. Liquors are also included, but these will not include top shelf brands. Cruisers cannot use this package in any of the specialty restaurants. So if you're wanting a drink with your specialty meals, you're having a lot of specialty meals, you don't want to pay extra, you may want to consider upgrading. The Easy Plus package includes selected cocktails that are priced at 9 euros or $10. This is $61 to $64 a day per person depending on cruise length. With this upgraded choice, you get everything from the Easy package as well as an upgrade to more expensive spirits and cocktails. There's a wider variety of beers available, possibly all brands on depend, may, that may depend on the ship. A wider selection of wines by the glass is included, along with a 10% discount on any bottles of wine. MSC's Premium Extra Package covers all beverages up to 14 euros or $16 and is $85 to $88 a day, depending on the cruise length. Of course, this includes all the previous drinks as well as top shelf liquors and fresh fruit and protein cocktails. The selection of wines by the glass is much larger and the discount for bottles of wine goes up to 25%. Now, depending on how you book your cruise, you may choose an upgraded bundle that includes one of the drink packages. This is what we did. Now, many bookings automatically include the easy package with the option of then upgrading. So we had the easy plus package which meant there were very few drinks we couldn't get included. I think there was one drink that I saw on, on one of the menus that I really wanted to try out, but it was then above our price cap. Now, I could have just paid the difference. I think it was a $10 drink. Our price cap was, was 9 I just could have paid that dollar. Well, it was euros because we were in Europe, but there were so many other cocktail options that I didn't feel the need to really do that. Mom couldn't always get the exact wine she wanted at dinner, but was always able to find something. Now, during our trip, I discovered the Hugo cocktail and ended up getting it along with my usual Long Island iced tea and amaretto sours. Now, I did discover that I could get what MSC called an ultimate iced tea, which was a Long Island made with top shelf liquors. And of course, I tried out multiple other drinks. I always like doing that for me. Getting to try out all of these different kinds of cocktails is part of the fun of cruising. And it's why we splurge for a drink package. There are a few things that I really like about MSC when it comes to their bars and drinks. The bars and lounges all had QR codes placed on tables for guests to scan to get the bar menu. Since the menus change from bar to bar, this is a great way to make the menus available for guests. Since almost everyone has a phone with them nowadays, I find this pretty convenient. Now, I never saw any paper menus, but I would guess that they would be available if someone asked. I just never even thought to ask. So what do you prefer? Do you like the QR codes or do you still want to look at a paper menu? Drop a comment below. 
Another thing I appreciated about MSC was their straws. It may seem like a little thing, but it isn't. The Eurybia specifically is a ship dedicated to be green and to marine conservation. The artwork on the ship pointed to marine conservation and even the design on the hull of the ship has the hashtag save the sea. Because of this, I knew going in that it was likely that the bars either wouldn't serve straws without you having to ask for it or they would have ones that were biodegradable in some way. Thankfully, most of the straws we were given were the biodegradable ones that still feel like a regular plastic straw. On one or two occasions, we were given paper straws, but they held up much better than any I have used previously. I'm not sure why they didn't use the ones that were like plastic on all the bars at all the time, but I'm just thankful they didn't have any of those nasty sugar straws that Carnival hands out. I also enjoyed the ability to order two drinks with one ship card. Not all lines do this, but this can be convenient for several reasons. While in a busy bar, one person can go grab drinks for two while the other person finds and saves seats. Sure, you could take both ship cards with you, but this means you don't have to do that. It also means that I could swing by and grab water bottles for both of us by myself on a whim without having to use both cards. Another thing I really liked is that they don't make you sign anything when you get a drink. That's something Carnival still does. They make you sign a bill every time. They say it's necessary. It obviously is not necessary, but I think the reason they do that is because there's a tip section and it really encourages people to add like a dollar tip on every drink. People, you are already paying 18% on Carnival. You don't need to do that. So I am happy that MSC is one of those lines that do not require you to sign anything after you order a drink. Another thing we liked about MSC is that in the evenings, we would often be served a bowl of snacks. So the offerings switched between chips, bugles, or peanuts. Since we were often stopping by for a pre-dinner cocktail, it was a nice little snack before heading off to dinner. Now we had early dining, but it would be even nicer for those who with the late seating, a bite to eat to help you get through until it's time for dinner. Of course, we all know that bars serve free salty snacks to make you thirsty so you'll buy more drinks. However, since many already have a drink package, I'm not sure that was the reason that MSE was doing it. I really liked that almost every bar had bar waiters going around taking and delivering orders. Unless the bar was really busy, this worked well and there wasn't a huge wait time. There were a few times when there weren't enough bar waiters for the amount of people in the area, but that was rare. Being able to relax and wait for someone to come to you instead of lining up at the bar is something I really enjoyed. Now, while many cruise lines do this to some degree, I felt the MSC did a great job of scheduling enough waiters to make sure that guests could be served without too much of a lag time. Now, on our cruise, the bars took a little bit of a hit by the end of the week as their stock dried up. They ran out of mint for sure. I guess a lot of people were ordering drinks with mint in them. This isn't a huge deal as most cruises I have been on, I've noticed that at least one or two items no longer is available by the end of the cruise. I guess it's hard to predict which drinks will be popular on a specific sailing. Let's get into the specific bars and lounges on the Euribia. Located on deck six, the Euribia Bar and Lounge was one of our most frequented spots. On our first day, we ended up there to wait for the mustard drill to finish. Now, while the bars could not serve until the drill was completely over, we were perfectly happy to find a seat and take in our surroundings and do some people watching. It's the first day on the ship. We ended up staying for a while and had a nice conversation with one of the bar waiters, a man named John, who would end up being our favorite crew member. We would make sure to go to the Euribia before our evening meals and have a cocktail or two and John would make sure to come over and check on us regularly and usually have a short chat with us if he had time. Now I always enjoy getting to know crew members and making friends with a bartender or bar waiter is always a good idea if you want to get your drinks brought to you in a timely manner. Now being polite, treating crew like human beings is a great way to do this. We are always grateful to the bar waiters when they come by tell them there is no rush when they apologize for the wait, and just generally try to be pleasant and easy to deal with. Now, let me tell you, this has benefited us more than once, especially if we spend a lot of time at a specific bar like we did at the Euribia Bar and Lounge. 
Once you make a crew friend, despite how busy it might be, you usually find that you won't be waiting around long before you're served. That was one of the two locations that we would often go to if we had some downtime and just wanted to find a place to read, people watch, and enjoy a drink. The other was the Sky Lounge. Located on Deck 18 and overlooking the main pool, the Sky Lounge was a great place to relax, get a drink, and be able to get a view of the world as it passed by. It was definitely a popular place on a cruise through the Norwegian fjords in the fall. The Sky Lounge had comfortable seating, including couches and then padded chairs that provided a place to relax. Now, I wouldn't say it was always a quiet place to relax. There were a few times that we ended up leaving after we'd been there a while when a noisy group would come in and sit close by us. Now, while there are obviously no rules about noise, I just think it's a little rude to set up a loud party in the middle of a bunch of people who are reading or having quiet conversations. I feel bad about that, but... Maybe I'm in the minority. The bars on either side of the main pool were the Atmosphere Bar, North and South. These were not places we frequented due to not spending much time out on the open decks. The South Bar was a place where I would see people lined up for their morning espressos and Americanos. I went there for a juice and a bottle of water one morning when the line to the buffet was just out of control and all I was trying to get was a drink. Overlooking the Horizon Pool on Deck 18 was the Horizon Bar. Now, we spent some time on the sun deck there at the aft of the ship after coming back on board after our day in Flom. It was a beautiful day, and there was a great view of vineyards up on a hillside. Now, while a couple of bar waiters did eventually show up when we first got there, I didn't see any, and I just ordered at the bar. Located on Deck 7 at the very aft of the ship, the Carousel Lounge is probably the largest lounge. Full of comfortable seating, it also has some places where you can tuck yourself away in a corner. Now, those are better for people who just want to relax than the cruisers who are there to watch the shows. You can't see the stage from them. Now, during our cruise, there was a singer and a band that was advertised as big band music, but it really wasn't. Yes, he had a band, but he sang more contemporary songs than those that you would consider big band music. It wasn't like it was 30s and 40s music. Still, it was enjoyable and it was a popular place in the evenings. Located on deck seven overlooking the Galleria, the Masters of the Sea is a British pub. I love the decor in this bar, leather seats with dark wood and lots of antiques and old books all in like a maritime theme. The one time we went in there, they weren't open when we first arrived, so it was empty. We were able to get a private booth in the back corner. Now, the app had said that the pub was set to open just as we were arriving, but apparently the times were incorrect as other people also came in and they would walk up to the bar and they were being told by the bartender that they weren't open yet and they wouldn't open for another 30 minutes. Mom and I were able to set up in a back corner booth and, and read for a while. It's just sometimes hard to find a quiet spot on a ship of 5,000 plus people. But the only people that were hanging out in the pub were a group of Australians playing cards. Now, they were having fun. They weren't being quiet in any way. But with so few people in there, it still felt like a private spot. We weren't fans of the drink we tried. It was an, based on an apple pie, but that was on us. I don't know what I was really thinking as I don't even like apple pie that much, but I guess in my mind, I thought the cinnamon would be more of a fireball cinnamon, like it's an alcohol, but then it tasted like actual cinnamon spice, which I don't care for. I think they literally spiced it with cinnamon. I like cinnamon oil, but not cinnamon spice. Trust me, they are different. <laughs> I mentioned this in my video on MSC's food, but one thing that was new to us was that the Eurybia's Buffet had a bar inside of it and then had bar waiters that would bring you your drinks. On each table, there was a button that you could push for service and a bar waiter would show up and take your order. Now, we always sat in the same section. It was further away from the buffet lines and it was never really crowded. And because we always sat in the same area, we ended up having the same bar waiter much of the time and got to talk to her some. I really liked this service as normally I would go by one of the nearby bars to grab a drink instead, which means having to decide do you do that before you go through the buffet or after? Usually it would mean that mom would wait in the buffet with our food while I would try to get drinks for both of us. Now, since we ate in the buffet more on this cruise 
than in the past due to it being one of the only options for meals, having bar service was a really nice thing. There were several bars that we did not try out for one reason or another. I had written them all down, the bars, where they were located, with the intention of trying them all out, but then I never went back and looked at the list, so I ended up missing trying out a few of the bars. We did check out the Helios Winemaker, but nothing there was part of our drink package. Our package did mean that we got a discount on any wine bottle had we wanted to go that route. Now, Mom's the wine person in our family. I don't really care for wine that much. I wish she'd been able to try some of the wine out, but we weren't going to spend money on drinks when we could go somewhere else for drinks that were already included in our package. I don't think I ever saw anyone actually getting drinks at Helios. I'm sure they did. They have to be getting some business or they would switch it out for some other type of bar. I think having high prices really affected the turnout there. They definitely didn't need all the seating that they had, and I often saw people sitting there without a drink in hand. I know we did that at one point. So while we passed the casino bar on our way to the carousel lounge, we never stopped for a drink there. I mentioned this in my video on the Euribia, but I hardly ever saw anyone in the casino to begin with. It was definitely different from a US-based cruise line full of Americans who love to gamble. I wonder if it would be a smart thing to try to get your drink at the casino bar before you went into the carousel lounge, or if they'd even let you do that. And maybe something to try if the carousel lounge is really busy. Now located on deck seven, we never visited the TV studio and bar while it was open. It was used mostly for things like trivia, dance classes, and karaoke. We either didn't have time for those, they were scheduled at the wrong time, or they weren't events that we chose to go to. Also located on deck seven is the champagne bar. Now I honestly don't even remember passing by this and seeing it, but I must have at some point. I think this might be because we rarely went any further forward on deck seven than those aft elevators because our room was in the aft and we just went down those aft elevators and then we would walk further aft to get to the carousel lounge. Then the one time we went to the pub, which was local, also located on deck seven, we walked up from the forward stairs. The Tropical Bar is located in the Solarium. The Solarium was a super popular location during a cruise where the temperature was usually too cool for most people to want to be in an outdoor pool. And the fact that it was so packed with families with lots of kids running around is why we didn't hang out there. Neither one of us had even brought swimsuits, so we certainly weren't headed in there for a dip in the pool. When we did walk through, everyone there was hanging out there because they were swimming or someone in their family was swimming, which is why there was a lot of families, I think, with children. All the children wanted to dip in the pool. We did go check it out one day with the intention of trying to find a spot to read, but even if we could have found an empty location, it really wasn't a quiet place to relax with a book. Needless to say, we didn't try out the bar since we weren't planning on sticking around. As cruisers who, so far, have always gotten the drink package, we enjoyed our time exploring and hanging out in the Eurybia's bars and lounges. I think that overall, they did a great job of making sure guests had a place to sit and were not left waiting for a drink for very long. Have you ever cruised on MSC and either had one of their drink packages or at least a few drinks at the bar? What was your experience? Do you think they do it better than the lines or not? Let me know. Well, if you're looking for more information on MSC, why not stick around and check out this video where I go over whether or not MSC's food is as bad as some cruisers claim. And then why not come back for more information designed to help you have an amazing cruise. Have a blessed week, everyone.